Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below, where I'm continually going through the lowest of the low games ranked on Board Game Geek, a giant database about board games, and just taking a look at them to see what we might find. Will we find treasure or will we find absolute trash? Probably more of the latter, but you never know. Today we're doing 17,101 and lower. Let's get started. So we always take a look at the first ones here. Junior Alias. What's Apples to Apples mod? I don't even know what that is. Alrighty. Bandits on Mars. Space Pigs. Fold Rigger. Uh, Monopoly Hotels we've already taken a look at in the past. Carnickel. And Dragon Rapid Fire. Alrighty. We've already found some games in the first ten. Junior Alias. Whoa. Who designs these covers? Those kids all look bored, and that's a staged picture. Okay, let's move on. Apples, apples, mod. What is this? There's a green apple die. The judge rolls a letter and thinks up an adjective. A, annoying. And then everyone plays a red card. Oh, so basically, they couldn't think up of enough you know, more cards, so they gave you a die. <laughs> Come on now. I'm not very impressed with this. All right, Bandits on Mars. This is from Gate on Games. It looks not like a good game from that cover. It looks like somebody who likes animals drawn like people. Wait, that's a human. Wait, these are humans. What just happened? Where'd the animals go? There's the animals and humans. Weird. Alrighty, bandits on Mars. Maybe Mars animals walk around. There's cyber bandits, and there's a Wild West theme park. Dexterity and memory. Okay. That's a combo I think a lot of people would not like. Alright. Space pigs. I remember seeing this one sold everywhere because it's, hey, pigs in space. This is from Tilsit. Uh... The designer, Pascal Bernard, he did the Conan game. Wow. And Joan of Arc. And Cadwallon City of Thieves. Okay, well, those are all games that people know about and like to talk about. This one is not one of those uh, that people are talking about, probably because of the bad components from Tilsit. But, hey, if you want to fight pigs in space, this is your game. Fold Rigger. Now, this is from Jens Eric Bjorn Hansen. It's the only game that they have done. Oof. So it looks like a very early pick up and deliver style game. Okay. Carnickel. Oh, I remember this game. This is a racing game with rabbits and using carrots to move because that's pretty much how every racing does. This is a lookout game. Now, lookout has not done too many kids games and Brett Gilbert, who is one of the designers, has done quite a few games. Divineer, Elysium, Professor Evil in the City of Time. So this is a kids game from him and I remember playing it thinking it was fine. It worked well for kids, thus that's why I got a six. Kids games do get ranked lower on board game. I say this all the time. Dragon Rapid Fire just re-implements Unicorn Glitter Luck, which is a game that my girls really enjoyed, but they also enjoyed Dragon Rapid Fire. So, unicorns or dragons. I think I may have played this one with my son. Nope, nope, I have not played this with him because he would have been two at the time. So, all right. Let's continue looking down here. Siege looks kind of cool. Uh, loaded Questions adult version. We are going to let that one go. Fantasia SA. Hurry Cup. Canaletto. Joomba. Boop, 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 boop. Joomba. Deluxe Past the Pigs. White Elephant. We've already taken a look at White Elephant in the previous list. Utter nonsense. All right. Siege. Those people look utterly bored. This is from AEG. 
AEG, when did this game come out? 2016. For a while, AEG was just like, throwing everything at the wall. And at some point, they decided to stop doing that and make re- only just a few good quality games. And, man, it's been an amazing turnaround. AEG is one of the best companies out there. This looks like one of those games that they were throwing at the wall back in the day. Fantasia S.A. That guy is super proud of himself. Who does he remind me of? Almost Kronk in a way, maybe. This oh, is an Eric Lang game. You're trying to get, huh. Eric Lang, 2008. This is before he became famous. I wonder if this game ever came out in English. That might be it. Let's take a look at the comments. A take that card game. Simple games, casual players. Too many unbalanced cards. Huh. Well, this just goes to show you not everything Eric Lang does is gold. That's the way it is with most designers, though. You're going to always find a game that's not so great for them. Hurry Cup. Looks like you build a racetrack. And you have some very stereotype racers. I don't hate the artwork on this, though, for sure. I don't know if I like that cover, though. This is from Hurricane. Oh, it's Antoine Bowser. I have not played this racing game from him. I wonder, well, we got to look at the comments, because this one's really ranked low. Young kids, fun racing game for families. Oof, that is a very low bell curve over here on the side. Rolling dice and having to quickly out grab your opponents for the pawn you want is outdated. Okay. Well, like I said, great designers. We're finding their games in the bottom here. Yeah, man, we continue this trend with Gunter Cornette, who's known for, hey, that's my fish, and Kahuna, and the bottle imp. But uh, now he has Canaletto, where people are just grabbing stuff from someone's house. I actually like the artwork on this one. This is from Hans and Gluck. And you're trying to get heirlooms in Venetian palaces. I love the board and how it looks, but it's not a great game, I guess. Joomba! This is a game you're just trying to claim cards. You reveal a card, and then you have to say you're looking for the animal that's on the card twice. Simple, fast game for kids. Deluxe past the pigs. Let's play past the pigs. Different colors and betting on which ones you'll get and chips and stuff. It's still past the pigs. Although I would play this with a top hat on. Utter nonsense. Oh, this was re-implemented by Utter Nonsense Family Edition. <laughs> I love, I love these. Okay, utter nonsense looks like a Cards Against Humanities. No, Taylor, I cannot just shake it off. Look both ways before you cross your mother. First roll pancake club of syrup on the side. Okay, I'm not sure I agree with that. What is it? You combine stereotypical accents with outrageous phrases to create sayings that are just plain ridiculous. Got it. So there's accent cards in here. Valley Girl. Okay, so it's those. Indian, Grandma. Yeah, okay. Definitely not a game I'm going to be playing. All righty. Balance of Power. We've already talked about that one in a previous one. Spooky Castle. Cyberpunk, the collective gar- card game, Garfield. We talked about that in the previous one, too. Cow Poker. Star Wars Miniature Starship Battles. Let's see what else we can find here. Formation. That's kind of a weird name. I want to look at that one. Knock, knock. We talked about that before. Legitimacy. I think we talked about that, but let's look at it just in case. Yeah, a lot of these we've already looked at in the past, at some of these. But we'll take a look at some new ones now on this one. Jim Henson's Dark Crystal, we looked at that. Unfortunately, I thought that would be a much better game. Open Fire, Solitaire, Tank, Gobbit, World War II. All right, here we go. Spooky Castle. Oh, yes. I like Spooky Castle. Spooky Castle's really good. So Spooky Castle, you have this magnetic stick. 
and you're moving through the castle, but you're blindfolded. Everyone else is telling you where to go, but that stick has a magnet on it, so they're trying really hard that you don't grab things by accident. It's a great game of cooperation for kids. It should be this low. Boo! Cyberpunk the CCG, also known as the most stereotypical looking CCG there is. Really bad artwork. Why can't these cyberpunk artists, isn't there like good cyberpunk art? Ah, so terrible. Cow Poker, it is from James Ernest, Mike Slinker, a Steve Jackson game. So typical Steve Jackson style game. I do like the artwork on this one. But it's probably a silly style poker type game. Star Wars miniatures game. Yeah, we looked at this one before. This is the kind of game I would love to play. Um, but, of course, we got X-Wing and Armada now. Formation. The underhanded rummy game. Uh -huh. So it's rummy but secret. Huh. Wonder who the designer of Formation is. Doesn't say. Create sequence and match stats. Get rid of your cards first to win. Watch out. Everyone is out to get you. That doesn't give us a lot of information to go on. Oh, really low ratings. The game might be worse than a rating. Variant Rummy where it provides a pool of common cards that may be used to play cards in any given turn. It adds awkwardness without improving the game. Well, some people said it's good, but... Mm -hmm. Legitimacy, we talked about this before. This is from Minion Games. A cool-looking game, but it was just a really bad roll-and-move fantasy-style game. Tornado Ellie. Well, that looks cool. So it's a stacking-style game with a, a cow going up in a tornado. And then you spin the board. Well, that looks fun. Looks like a kid-style game from Fox and Hook. I would try this one out. Open Fire Solitaire Tank Combat World War II. I would not try this one out, probably. Oof. I mean, I guess if you're going to play uh, one of these games, playing it Solitaire might work. That's a lot of charts, a lot of information to keep track of. It's also ranked really low which is not good for a war game, since people aren't going to play this unless they tend to like these style games. Oh, it's the armor version of Ambush. That's interesting, because Ambush is rated really highly. Ah, it says a good system for infantry doesn't work well for armor. There you go. Simpler than Ambush, less exciting. Eh. I know Ambush is very, very popular. All right, we talked about Dwarven Dig in the past. Accentuate the positive. My Monopoly. Epic Death. I remember that game. I don't think I played it. Banana Bandits we've talked about in the past. We're, we're definitely crossing some ones we've already seen before, but don't worry, we'll pass that note soon. Rise or Fall. Escape from Elba. Den of Thieves, Brain Box World. I want to take a look at that one briefly. And Altamira. All right. You need to accentuate the positive. Another fun of accents. I don't know. I don't know that a game of accents is something I want to do right now. I feel the need for speed, but what are the accents? I can't. But it's the same as the other game. Valley Girl again. Californian, Canadian, Mexican, Scottish, overly tired. Well, that accent I can do. Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. What's the game, though? Guessing the accent? My Monopoly. Bum, 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 bum. My Monopoly. Oof. You're just putting... You just stick stickers all over a game? How terrible. Like, you want something in My Monopoly, you want it to look good. This makes it look bad. Epic Death. I remember when this came out, and I remember laughing about the cover. I mean, this is very clearly Conan, but it did not. I, 
I had no desire to ever even play this game, mostly because of how it looked. I guess it's okay, but you just fight each other with dice. He just never made it to the table for me. Rise or fall. This is from Fox Mine. Clicks in school. I'm still a little confused why people like this clicks in school thing. That's a designer click. Reiner Knizian, Friedman Fries, and Anton Baza, and the guy on the left is eluding me who that is. Oh, must be the designer of this game, maybe I would have guessed. Who designed this game? Martin Nienengard Anderson. No, it doesn't look like him. Ooh, he just designed Escape from the Asylum, a game that I'm really enjoying, though. So, hey, you never know. Escape from Elba. Players and Napoleon wannabes in an insane asylum. You go around from room to room fighting other Napoleons. James Ernest, the man is certainly brilliant when it comes up to these insane, weird themes, but it's got to be a good game, too. Also, his games tend to have similar th feels to them. Den of Thieves. This is from Rogue Publishing. I said that it was okay. Wow, not great artwork, though, that's for sure. When did I review Den of Thieves? 2011. Man, my, I remember the box, I remember the cards, and I don't remember much about the game. Brain Box World, Brain Box are just trivia-style games, but I like their packaging a lot. Um, I'm not a huge trivia game guy, but using these boxes, these brain boxes, I thought it's a lot of fun, especially for kids. Altamira from Zock. <laughs> this is why I love doing this 10,000 below list. I would not have expected to see this here. Is that what the piece in the game looked like? What is going on? That is fantastic. I am humored by this. Those people are laughing at them too. It's not a good game, unfortunately, I guess, but they have hair. Pawns are awesome. Game is not that good. Funny meeples. Bizarrely hairy, smiley meeples in an otherwise straight laced game. Everyone likes the meeples. Oh, someone's got to make a good game with these meeples in it. That is fantastic. When did this game come out? 2007, 13 years. You know those meeples are out there. If I get a copy of Altamira, I'm going to get it and just keep those meeples and use them for something else. That's funny. Alrighty. Zogar's Gaze. Party Pooper. The million pound drop. That sounds like a TV show. Zune. Mission Command Land. Oh, we got to talk about that one. Uh, Koenig der Malwerfer. Disorder. We'll talk about that one too. Snifty Snakes. Yay, Snifty Snakes. That's it. 196, only 33 ratings. We got to talk about Snifty Snakes though. The Game of Life, Indiana Jones. The Mutiny on a Little Blue. <gasps> Boo! That's a pretty high rating I have for a game that's ranked that low. Among Us. And then Mermaid Island. All right, here we go. Zogar's Gaze. I feel like we looked at this one already. Look at Zogar. And this blue barbarian. There's eyes everywhere. I mean, like... A mermaid. Oh, I hate this art. Party pooper. You're going to point in all directions to see who's the party pooper and who's the party animal. Most likely to and most non likely to. I'm really, really getting tired of these type of games. I'll probably drop my rating of this. I'm just tired of like who is the person most likely to do whatever. Million pound drop based on a TV show of the same name. Well, there you go. You begin with a million pounds. You run the risk of losing it. You have to answer all the questions or be left with nothing. Does it come with little packs of hundred of ooh, I do like the, the, the pieces there. Those are pretty neat. Zune. 
Well, this came out 21 years before, <coughs> excuse me, Zoom became popular. This looks like it shows how the pieces move here, like chess. I don't hate the artwork, but it looks like a chess in a box game. Let's see if I'm right. Hmm-ish. Mission con Command Land. Now, this re-implements Tank Battle. So let's take a look at Tank Battle first. It came out in 1975. This is ranked even lower. Um, so they remade him in the Mitch Control series. This one I had high hopes for. Um, when you look at the pictures here, it comes with tanks and airplanes and things. The tanks have secret numbers underneath them so that you don't know who has what. But it's just not a good game. It's kind of like Stratego, but with less information. Really cool pieces. And if you get a copy of the game, yeah, you can play, you can play with the pieces, I suppose. Just not, and you're just like shooting at tanks and stuff. It sounds cooler than it is. I really wanted to like it. Koenig der Malwarfer. Oh, yeah, we already saw this one in the past. I love these guys with the big mouths with dice coming out of them. Disorder. This is, uh, you're adding a card to the board, and you need to basically say, can you make a word with these? It's a good little party game. Not great, but good. All right, snip these snakes. There's the game. That's right, you put these on. Now, we know this game because if you go to Board Game Geek Con, every year they run a Battling Tops tournament, and every year a team comes out, they borrow the Snip These Snakes game, and they come out and wear these. That's their, that's their uh, shtick, the Snip These Snakes, and that's how everyone knows about it. It's a terrible idea for a game, but it's a funny gimmick. The Game of Life, Indiana Jones. Who, what? Does he decide, like, I will be a teacher or I'll be an adventurer? Okay, you're just showing me pictures from the movie here. Boo. 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 I'm glad this has a bad rating. Mutiny on a Little Blue is a great little game that is designed by Christian M. M. Unson Ostby, who's done some really great games like Santa Maria Escape, Automania. Magnificent, great games. This was my introduction to his stuff. And I really like this one. Uh, each person is on a ship here. One person's the captain. They're taking one person on shore. Depending on who you take on shore, you're going to get different diamonds and gems. Everyone's trying to convince who you are, but one person's the mutineer. Now, the game needs to be streamlined. It needs to be made better. It needs some update. But I like the concept. It was fun, and I enjoyed it. But you got to like lying. Among Us. This one was okay. This is the idea of aliens on a board and you're moving people around trying to not get caught. These aliens are coming out and you're trying to figure out who the traitors are and things like that. It's a game that's not going to age well, I think, at all. It's a fun idea, but meh. It's okay. And then Mermaid Island. Didn't I review this one? I did not. Huh. How weird. I think my daughters would have liked it. They tend to like mermaids. Not anymore, I guess. Well, a kid's game about mermaids. That's why it's ranked so low. From Peaceable Kingdom. Alrighty. We made it through another 100 games. More are coming. We'll have to wait till next time to see them. Is there games in this 100 that you want to talk about? Mention them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. And you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.